Welcome back to Grizzly Reviews. My name is Garrett and today I will be reviewing Midsommar. This is the final movie that A24 and AMC are doing during the month of October. I missed out on X because I stayed home to watch that with Anthony and then I went to go see Beetlejuice instead of the Scarlett Johansson movie. So I've tuned into the first one which was The Witch and now this one Midsommar which I was expecting to be the director's cut. All of the promotional material was saying that this would be the director's cut of the movie. Even the runtime that AMC had posted at two hours, 50 minutes made me think it was the director's cut, but it was just the theatrical cut. And it started early with no trailers or anything like The Witch had. So I missed like a few minutes. Thankfully though, this is a movie I really enjoy. I've seen it many times before. I own the Blu-ray. I have a poster of it from the time I worked at the movie theater. The second film made by Ari Aster, Midsommar is the story of a couple that travels to Northern Europe to visit a rural hometown's fabled Swedish Midsummer Festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. So I really love Midsommar, I'm gonna just say that out of the way. My first time viewing this movie was with some friends. I was super afraid to watch this movie on my own. I heard that it was batshit crazy insane and I just didn't want to have to watch this movie by myself because I didn't know if I would like be able to handle it or not. Even though I watched Hereditary on my own, so I don't know what that says. And it's something I try to watch every year. This was my second time watching this movie this year. I had watched Midsommar earlier before Bo is Afraid came out in theaters. I'm gonna spoil this entire movie in this review too. If you have not seen Midsommar, I highly suggest you go watch it. It is a great daytime horror film. Go enjoy yourself. Midsommar is one of the best technically made movies I've ever seen. And especially now seeing it in a theater with a big screen, I have a lot more love for the cinematography of this movie. There is just so much going on in every shot. It is gorgeous. The fact that you're in the sun for 90% of this movie is outstanding. It just makes everything so bright. There is so much color in this movie, especially for how depressing this movie can be sometimes. Or at least depressing in the way how Danny is feeling. So you're in this bright, vibrant area all of the colors of the trees, the grass, the buildings, it all just looks so amazing with how this was filmed. Huge shout out to Powell Porgorzelski for the cinematography of this movie. I am so sorry, I just completely butchered your name. The way the camera just stays in a, an entire scene and the camera doesn't cut and it just lets the scene happen it tracks along, it slowly pans across the way. Or when they're driving through Sweden and the camera just goes upside down and they all did this in camera while things are moving, it's pretty crazy they did these things. Midsommar is just a cinematographer's dream movie. I want to do cinematography in the film industry, so just watching how this movie is filmed is outstanding on its own, worth any amount of money you need to go see this movie. It's filmed perfectly. I love how mirrors or a picture frame is used in this movie to show characters talking but you're keeping on one specific character to show their reaction to it while also still getting your performance from the other actors. It just makes a room seem full and lived in, like you're not just on a set that they're only showing one angle from. It's something really cool that Ari Aster does in this movie. Story-wise, Midsommar at its most basic is a breakup movie. Danny and Christian are honestly an awful couple for each other. Danny has a lot of emotional trauma she's going through and is leaning on Christian, but Christian is not giving her the attention she needs because he does and see himself being in this relationship very longer and he wants out of it but at the same time he doesn't want to hurt Danny. It's just how to not be a couple 101 and it's it sucks to watch. It's hard to watch sometimes because Danny will just say that Christian would be someone that would leave her 
and not tell her where he's going, which he kind of almost does in this movie. So her pointing that later in the film, after Connie and Simon are gone, it works why she would say that and why he would react the way that he does. And traveling to this cult place is pretty cool because you get to see a different culture, how it works, how they live. You see almost every single aspect of their livelihood. I don't know if this is a real cult group of people that live. I don't know if it was just completely made up for this movie. I know that the sets and everything they're in were made for this film. I'm gonna point out the bed house that they're in, all of the artwork around there is phenomenal. How this movie did not win any Oscars for production design, baffling. Really the Academy needs to give horror films the attention that they deserve. Especially when box office wise, they're a huge draw right now. Midsommar is surprisingly a really funny horror movie. Maybe because I'm just seeing this alone, all of the humor hasn't really connected with me, but seeing it in a packed theater and hearing all the laughter, especially from what Will Poulter would say in this movie, made it a much more enjoyable experience. And it's not so dreadful as you would expect an Ari Aster movie to be because of the horror that's going through it. There are so many jokes I wanna point out from this movie, but I'm just gonna stick with the first time everyone trips on mushrooms and how Will Poulter is giving us what it's like to be tripping. It's very funny, him reacting to new people that are arriving, or the fact that the sky is blue when it's technically 9 p.m. It's all very funny. What time is it? It's 9 p.m. What do you mean? What do you mean? That can't be right, the sky is blue. It's fine, it's Sweden. That's not fine. Why is it like that? It's okay, Mark. It's the midnight sun. That feels wrong, I don't like that. I'm not okay. Oh, fuck. It's a new person. What? I don't want new people right now. I'm just gonna lay down, okay? Yeah, do that. Everybody else lay down. Guys, do it, it feels so nice. Will Poulter is very good in this movie. He's awesome, he's hilarious. He's that right kind of likable douchebag that you want to stay in your movie. And it sucks when he is eventually killed off screen you don't get to see that. Maybe you get to see it in the director's cut, but I don't know, I didn't get to see that version. The tick stuff is very funny. The Waco joke after the Atis Stupin happens. Will Poulter, thankfully, is not in that scene. If Mark was in it, I would be severely unhappy because he wouldn't give it the seriousness it deserved. And you want the focus to be on how Connie and Simon are reacting to it and how Florence Pugh's Danny is reacting to it as well. The Addis Stupin, by the way, oh my gosh. You kind of get a hint at what the Addis Stupin is going to be when Pele and Josh talk about it the night before. You get intrigued with the breakfast stuff and Josh asking if those are the people that are part of it. That scene I love, by the way, all of the clinking of silverware and the plates in this movie is just so pleasing in an ASMR sense. And then you arrive at the location where the Addis Stupin is taking place. You have that intrigue building up, and then there's suspense. The elderly people start walking towards the edge of the cliff. They cut their hand open, ripe it on this rock. And then the dread sinks in when you start realizing what's going to happen, and then holy Fuck, they jump off the cliff. And it's really cool how it's done. The first person that dies, the lady, does it how it should be. She lands on the rock, going head first, her head smacks, she's dead. And then the old dude does it, and he goes foot first, banks off the edge of that rock, and he's just messed up. So they have to bring that mallet and hit him the entire time Connie and Simon are reacting to what's happening. And it's, it's just so so sensory, overwhelming what's going on. The sound kind of mulls out. You hear Connie and Simon like screaming in the background because Danny is kind of mid panic attack, kind of just like zoned out with what's going on. And the gore in this movie, it is quick, it is sudden, it is graphic, and then it is gone. It does not linger, which is amazing 
for this movie. You're just getting these flashes of disgusting gore. I'm really glad that the movie doesn't stick on the gore scenes too long. And I really love the explanation afterwards from the pagan lady talking about what the ad is stupid means, why they are sacrificing themselves, what that means for their religion and why they're happy with it and why to us it seems like a crazy thing, but to them it's very good. They think it's gonna do good and it's just a really nice explanation and you understand what these people are doing, you know? Danny is played by Florence Pugh. This was maybe my first movie I saw her in and I've loved her ever since. She's in my list of favorite actresses of all time. The screaming and crying that she does in this movie is superior, fantastic, I love it. Jack Rayner plays Christian, the awful boyfriend. He is so awful and disgusting to everyone in this movie. He uses people in the worst way, truly an awful person. He kind of deserves what happens to him at the end of this movie, but I also feel for him a little bit because the cult drug him up in many different ways. And then they kind of non-consenting have him fuck one of the girls. And it's just like, he's not really knowing what's going on right now. You're kind of doing a bad thing. And he kind of doesn't deserve to die the way he does in that sense. But everything else he does in this movie, he definitely deserves it. I really think next year I'm gonna do the bear suit for Halloween. It's basic, but I can add like the gore that's going down the middle of it. I can I can make it not as basic as it looks. Lastly, I want to talk about William Jackson Harper, who plays Josh. He is the reason why they're going on this trip, because he wants to do his thesis on Midsummer Festivals. And he's a very studious, practical being, a bit of an ass for not telling them what the Addis Stupin is, and he never gets any flack for it. Like, you know what this is, you know what Danny's been through, why would you not say what it is? But I love William Jackson Harper. He plays Cheaty in The Good Place, which is in my top five favorite shows of all time. And it's awesome to see him do a horror movie. This came out during the run of The Good Place, and I was just happy to see him in more stuff. I'm really glad he's in this movie. He did a great job. I want to talk about the cults. Um, I don't understand their motivations. So from what I'm gathering is that they bring new people to the community so that they can sacrifice them for the festival. These people don't know what's happening. I don't know if they planned, like, I just don't know if the events of the ha movie would have happened if the same things happen. You know, if Mark didn't pee on the ancestral tree, would he have died the way he did? If Josh didn't go to sneak and take pictures of the book, would he have died the way he did? Would they have died at all? There's other new people that I think were at the festival as well, like one girl that was wearing regular clothes. We never see her again, I think, throughout the rest of the movie. So I'm just really confused by the motivations of the cult because was this their plan from the beginning or was it just happy stand that these outsiders were as stupid as they were and doing terrible things so they just killed them anyways. So why I think that this was purposeful is how much the cult is lying to everyone. Everyone gets lied to in this movie. It is constant throughout the film once Connie and Simon have left the community. By the way, what happened to Simon? Oh my God. God, that shit is brutal and wild. He's still alive. <laughs> it's crazy. I love the main flower competition stuff. It is really cool. There's a lot of intensity to it. The score during this scene and the music that's playing when they arrive to the community, it's all diegetic. It's all amazing. It all works so well to fit the film and it just makes the movie so much better. Visually with this film, when characters are tripping and you have all of the warping effects going on around them, it's really awesome, super trippy, which is the effect that they're going for. And it also allows you to have a perspective of who, which character's POV 
wherein, especially towards the end of the movie, once Danny has won the Mayflower Queen and they're all having their meal afterwards, everyone's high at this point. But at the end of it, Danny's high has come down, but because Christian took his way later, he's still going on. So you still see all of like the effects going around him when it cuts to like bigger wide shots and you're in Danny's perspective. It's just regular, it's just, it's just flat. It's really cool how they did those effects. The editing for this movie is fantastic. There's not a lot of editing for this film because of how long shots will linger and just let scenes develop and go on. Ari Aster has done an amazing job with the writing for this movie. There is so much foreshadowing of events that are going to happen. I'm not sure if that was all written in the script, but at least in the sense of what we're being presented visually, it looks like it's all written down. Or they just had an idea and was like, hey, at the beginning of the movie, we should put a picture of a bear with a little girl holding flowers on top of Danny's bed. And then later on, when we're in the cult community place, you see the story of the love potion or the love spell. And then you see it happen later with Maya and Christian throughout the movie. I will say, with how funny this movie is, I kind of wish people weren't laughing through the sex stuff so much. Like Christian's reacting to it is a little bit funny, but what he's going through is kind of messed up and I don't think we should be laughing at it. Like I think maybe the best part to laugh at it is when the woman comes behind him and grabs his ass and like pushes forward. That's funny. Um, and like his reaction to it. But otherwise it's just like, let the uncomfortability settle. And I understand that's how people are letting out how uncomfortable they are with that scene. But I, I just, I just wish it wasn't so laugh inducing. It's more of a critique on the audience I saw it with than the movie itself. Like I don't know if that's the intention of that scene completely. So just really watch this movie for yourself. Like genuinely really love Midsommar. It is fantastic. The camera work, the directing by Ari Aster, how much stuff is happening in frame. You have your characters in the forefront, all of these cult people doing what they're doing in the background all happening at the same time, no cuts. The fact that you're able to just gather all of these people together and make this happen is incredible. By the end of the movie, I am happy for Danny. I am happy she has found a new family and is feeling a sense of community and love, which she was not feeling before with Christian. That smile that Florence Pugh gives at the end of this movie is maybe the creepiest it, it was the creepiest smile i've ever seen on film until pearl happened and mia goth just blew florence Pugh out of the water i would love them to have like a smile staring contest i hope that she gets with pele because pele actually seems to care about her he remembered her birthday he gave her the little drawing one line I really love from this movie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. So Pele is talking with Danny about, like, why he can understand the grief that Danny feels for her parents after the Adestupin happened. During his conversation, he brings up that the community that he has made him get through the grief, and he is worried that Danny does not have this. So he asks her, do you feel held by him? Does he feel like home to you? And those are powerful lines that make you really think, is this a good relationship for me or not? And I really appreciated that part of the script, that Pele is the one to point that out to her. He, of everyone, is the one that seems to care about her the most. Like, everyone is just kind of blasé about her being there. They don't really want her there, but they're not gonna say no because then Christian probably wouldn't go. So they're kind of just stuck with her. And it's an unfortunate situation for all of them to be in, but it's also a horror movie, and they deserve everything that's coming to them, for the most part as I've discussed. So yeah, Midsommar is a movie I really love. Everything about this movie is perfect. The performances, the direction, the production design, the editing, the cinematography. It is one of the best daytime horror movies ever made. And I'm gonna give Midsommar a 10 out of 10.
it's just amazing. The horror in this movie works so well, especially in a theater setting. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a movie experience I'm not gonna forget seeing in theaters. Um, highly suggest you go watch it. And yeah, if you have seen it, let me know in the comments down below what you thought about it. If you liked this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit subscribe so you know when they come out. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye! <sighs> that's it. Yeah, that's the one.